2020, myself Anna Baker, Conference Executive of Dementia Conference. Thanks for connecting second edition of Dementia Webinar. Uh, I request all the participants to mute their laptops or mobile phones in order to have a clear audio of speakers. On a special note, I would like to thank all our collaborators, especially Thilocyte from United States of America and St. Joseph God Hospital from Italy and ECOM from Lithuania. And me along with my manager, Mr. Krishna, would be happy to assist you in this webinar. And I request all, we have a last minute change program as the first keynote speaker Dr. Hayat Umis, not able to attend due to some personal reasons. Kindly apology for the inconvenience. And this lot will be replaced by Dr. Huang Willing, Medical Pension and Pain Management Clinic from Brazil. Thank you. Uh, I've shared my uh, pre presentation. Uh, okay, Dr. Shalpa. No. I'm trying to, to share, but I, I little me uh, leave the meeting. Alice, did you get the Shil Dr. Shilpa's PPT? I, I got the share screen. I'll be able to do that. Don't worry. Okay, okay, okay Dr. Shilpa. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Very Shilpa. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. So that's fine. Okay. I would like to introduce Dr. Huang Willing, born in Taiwan, raised and graduated in medicine in Brazil, specialist in infectious and parasitic diseases, a general partition and parental eternal medical nutrition therapist. Once in a charge of the hospital infection control service of the city of Francia General Hospital, she was responsible for the control of all the prescribed antimicrobial medication and received an award for the best paper presentation at the Brazilian Hospital Infection Control Congress in 1998. Since 1997, she worked with the approach and treatment of all chronic diseases in a holistic way with the treatment guided through the teaching of traditional Chinese medicine and Hippocrate, researchers in the University of Sao Paulo in the ophthalmology department from 2012 to 2013. And I would like to introduce her title, Energy and Chakras Alteration in Patients with Dementia. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see yes. your screen, Doctor. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone. My name is Juan Weiling, a medical doctor from Brazil. Uh, uh, my presentation today is... Your voice is not audible. Is not? Oh, let me see. Uh, 
I need to, I need to do something. Uh, wait a minute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, let me see you now. <clears throat> I would like to say the organizing community, uh, it's not good, the, the sound here. Let me see. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, it's better now. <clears throat> I would like to thank <laughs> the organizing committee to invite me to this uh -huh. conference today to share my experience. Today, the, uh, the study that I will present is entitled Energy Alterations and Chakras Energy Deficiencies in Patients with Dementia. This presentation will be divided into parts. The first part, I'll be talking about Western medicine point of view about the bank's symptoms. And in the second part, I will show you what is the point of view in traditional Chinese medicine point of view on this matter, including a case report exploring the patient's symptoms and how we can explain this by the energy point of view and construct the treatment accordingly. The, uh, the reason why I'm bringing this presentation is based on thoughts of Hippocrates, the father of medicine, who said that it's very important to take into account the oldest medicine before the medicine currently used nowadays. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share um, quote of his uh, 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 share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. Another quote of him would be foolish the doctor who despised the knowledge acquired by the ancients. Uh, dementia is not a single disease, it's an overall term that covers a wide range of specific medical conditions, including Alzheimer's disease, multi-infarct dementia, and Parkinson's disease, AIDS, dementia after brain injury or cardiac arrest, etc. Disorders uh, grouped under the general term dementia are caused by abnormal brain changes. And these changes trigger a decline in thinking skill, also known as cognitive abilities, severe enough to impair daily life and independent function. And they also affect behavior, feelings, and relationships. Many conditions are progressive, which means that the signs of dementia start out slowly and gradually get worse and symptoms and signs of dementia can vary greatly. It can start with problems with short term, memory, not remembering people, misplacing sites, forgetting dates, tasks and appointments, having trouble controlling their bladder and bowels, showing an increased tendency to wander and becomes lost, etc. cetera. 
And according to Western medicine, dementia is an irre irreversible, incurable disease. There is no treatment that show, uh, slows or stops its progression. In Western medicine, there are, there are drugs treatment that may only temporarily improve symptoms. If we see this patient by the energy point of view, I wouldn't call the dementia symptoms irreversible. So I will, uh, you will see by the end of this presentation. But in traditional Chinese medicine, the factors that cause qi and kidney deficiency are the developers of the brain weakness and emptiness, which is the very pathology of dementia in traditional Chinese medicine. And can you, can you turn off your speaker, please? It's, there is a sound in the background. Thank you. Il va avoir des informations de connexion, dont le lien pour rejoindre le meeting zone depuis un poste de. And poor blood circulation is direct cause of brain emptiness. If the spleen and the stomach functions are not strong, the body will suffer phlegm and mucus stagnation in the meridians, and therefore. There are, these are the three causative factors for the amazing TCM, the kidney energy deficiency, blood defic stagnation, and phlegm stagnation. I will later approach two case study. I treated myself of patients with symptoms of dementia, but first I would like to present this specific case I had in 2006 that changed my way of constructing and applying treatment. The patient in question was diagnosed with kidney and deficiency. According to traditional Chinese medicine, he was presenting symptoms of pain in the legs and was using anti-inflammatory medication without any improvement for a period of six months. And the patient was taking these drugs and uh, as he didn't have improvement with the medications, he searched for the treatment using traditional Chinese medicine. And in his treatment, I used the Chinese dietary counseling, a weekly acupuncture, systemic acupuncture, associated with apex blood to take these symptoms according to his energy imbalances. And here is the apex blood that I did to take out the kit that usually patients with energy deficiencies have. And the, the patient presented an improvement of his pain in the legs after 10 acupuncture sessions and went back to the clinic to be reevaluated again. On this occasion, he revealed to me that he also had a major improvement of the symptom I was not aware he had. He was being treated for glaucoma in the last 40 years with no significant improvement. And for he, the first time in his life, his intraocular pressure diminished from 40 to 17 mmHg and the treatment for kidney and deficiency, not only improvement his symptoms of leg pain, but also improved his intraocular pressure. In Western medicine perspective, when treating dementia or other any other disease or pathology is based on treating the affected organ or cure the symptom in the leaf level of this tree. Traditional Chinese medicine, on the other hand, sees any pathology or disease as a reflex of a bigger, deeper issue in the root of this tree. And that is why this presentation will focus on the root of the tree that are the energy balances leading to the symptoms of dementia today. Now I would like to talk about the two patients I treated myself that had symptoms of dementia and sought of my help and ancient, uh, with ancient and traditional Chinese medicine tools. This patient was 92 year old female patient diagnosed with Alzheimer's and the patient was blind since 1988 due to glaucoma condition. 
The patient family sought for my help for she was acting stubborn, had the necessity of washing hands all the time, urinary incontinence and hallucinations. She started to treat this condition with high concentrated medications and started losing memory and physical energy. And she started to complain of pain in the knees, back and joints. And physical therapy and exercise were not effective. I did the measurement of her chakras energy and with a procedure called the radiesthesia and the result was that all her chakras were in the lowest level of energy. Uh, uh, only the seven chakras that did the, the spiritual chakra were normal. The first chakra corresponds to the liver energy in TCM, the second kidney, the third is the heart, the fourth is the lung, the fifth is the spleen. All of their internal organs were in the lowest level of energy. This means that one, in, one organ has an energy function and the, the balance between yin, yang, qi, and blood depends on the functioning of the, the chakras and energy. The yin and yang are produced in the second chakra, the kidney, and the blood is produced in the spleen when you, uh, the spleen absorbs the nutrients that you consume and it is transformed by blood to uh, to take nutrients to all cells and organs. And it is uh, um, commanded by the heart. The heart commands the flux of the blood inside the vessel. And the chi is governed by the liver and the lung. And you, you can see that all this energy were in the lowest level. And it's why all the functioning in her body were not uh, working properly. And the memory and concentration is governed by the kidney in traditional Chinese medicine, leading to signs and symptoms of memory loss. Uh, for her treatment, I did the Chinese dietary counseling, recommending to avoid the dairy products, raw food, cold water and sweets, and also uh, coffee, soda, mati tea, because these uh, drinks can imbalance the kidney meridian that is responsible for memory and concentration and the production of yin yang yang. And also I recommend to avoid the uh, fried food, eggs, chocolate, honey, coconut and alcoholic beverages and also melted cheese because all these foods could imbalance the energy of liver and gallbladder that's responsible for the distribution of the energy inside the body. And these foods could um, induce the formation of more internal heat that was causing the uh, some kinds of hallucinations and anxiety and all other symptoms of the, these patients. And also I did the auricular acupuncture with apex blood Latin. This procedure is to take out the heat retention that the patient was presenting because the heat is caused by the lack of the energy that uh, she had as I demonstrated in the chakras. And when the patient had uh, uh, less or no energy, the, uh, the body begin the production of internal heat that uh, is responsible for some symptoms in our body, such as diabetes, hypertension, and uh, infection, uh, many other disease, including cancer also. And in this case, I'm taking out the heat to treat and after to balance the internal energy of yin, yang, qi, and blood to promote health again. And here are the medications that I usually use to treat the lack of energy in the chakras. 
And in China, they used to use uh, the um, treatment of these uh, organs with Chinese herbs. But uh, in Brazil, I have some difficulties in acquiring these medications to treat the patients. And that's why I begin the study uh, of homeopathy. And during my course, I created one theory called the Constitutional Homeopathy of the Five Elements based on traditional Chinese medicine. When I use the homeopathy medications to treat internal organ disharmony in the energy point of view, but using traditional Chinese medicine reasoning. This is the publication you can search at the internet. It was uh, published in July this year. And also I use the food to, uh, to do the equilibrium of the in internal energies. According to Hippocrates, we need to use the food as our medication, our medication, our food. Here's to show you the necessity to tone the second chakra in this kind of patients because the kidney in traditional Chinese medicine is responsible for all the signs and symptoms and memory loss, but the kidney, it, it, it's down to work uh, isolated. They all this chakra, they work in harmony and one depends on the other in the functioning. And also the, it's important to tone this spleen because this spleen is responsible for the absorption of nutrients to distribute this energy to other chakras and other energy and other systems. And with, if this chakra is not working properly, all the foods that the, the, the patient is ingesting is not absorbing properly and it's not transforming energy inside the body. That is why it's necessary to take out all of the dairy products, raw food, cold water, and the sweets because these foods could imbalance these meridian that is causing this kind of imbalance. And also, uh, it's very important to tone these two energies because the imbalance of the spleen is responsible for the production of uh, mucosity and humidity in the body. One of the cause of energy disturbances causing uh, dementia in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, also, this, 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 this patient, uh, what is striking about this patient is that she worsened the symptoms of memory loss and loss of physical strength when she started treatment with these symptoms with high concentrated medication. When you use this kind of medication in this patient that has this kind of, uh, of energy disturbances uh, with uh, uh, no energy in the chakras, you will reduce even more the energy of uh, the vital energy, including all the energy that he, she already has, it's very low. And when you use this kind of medication, you could induce more the energy balances leading to worsening of the symptoms. That is why it's important to, to reduce this kind of medications. And um, the symptoms of pain, the joints in TCM could be related to her diet. If, if she was ingesting dairy products, the first symptoms would be the pain, the joints. And the second cause that may be leading to pain, the joints is the invasion of the external pathogenic factors such as wind and cold. And for the patient who is very weak in energy, her body has to no defense to prevent the entry of these external pathogenic factors. And uh, as you can see, all the symptoms related to this patient are related to the energy deficiency in the chakras, which in turn is responsible for the normal functioning of all internal organs. And you, um, according to traditional Chinese medicine, one internal organ is responsible for one external sensorial organ. For example, 
the wood is representing the liver and the liver is responsible for the eye and vision. The fire is represented by the heart and the heart is responsible for the tongue and the communication. And earth is resp uh, represented by the spleen is responsible for the mouth and sense of taste. And metal is um, represented by the lung is responsible for a sense of smell. These two uh, chakras are, are very compromised nowadays in patients with the uh, COVID-19 infection. It's very common to see they having lack of sense of taste and smell. This is my other presentation. This, this presentation yesterday in a COVID-19 webinar explaining this energy disharmony in the chakra center leading to this kind of symptoms in COVID-19 infected patients. And the water is representing the kidney and the kidney is responsible for the hearing process in the ear. And that is why when the patient has some of these alterations, such as in the eye, the communication, this lack of a sense, smell or impaired hearing process, it is important to access the root of the problem that are the energy disharmony in the chakras or in the internal organs and not just treating the symptoms in the, in the leaf level. Now I'll begin to describe the second case report. It's a 84 year old female patient weighing 44 kilos sought my help due to metabolic syndrome. Her diet was composed of a lot of carbohydrates and she facing a, um, a, a very fat food. A lot. She, she likes to eat very fat food. But she always had to be monitored because of her diabetes type 2 and severe hypertension. And the patient also suffered of constant heavy headaches three nights lazy vesicle and severe gastrites, having contracted uh, agar pylori several times. And she was always an active person and she walked every day, did household chores, and crafted um, chilled, but uh, did gro grocery shopping and lived her life normally. But at the end of 2017 and beginning of 2018, she started to feel dizzy and she felt very weak and her appetite was very bad. She started losing weight and she started to go to doctors mainly on duty and without results. And she complained a lot about her stomach and was always very hypoglycemic. Everything she ate made her sick she would often force vomiting because she felt that relieved her sick stomach. And her lack of appetite lingered and at the moment, all she wanted to do was lie down. A very debilitated and dehydrated. She was unable to control glucose with normal levels always higher than 200. And in the consultation with the otorhinolaryngologist, she presented the strong and controllable tremors in her hands and a brain resonance was requested. And while waiting for exam less than a week, she had a significant worsening with body stiffness and back and forth to the hospital. It started to be the patient's routine. Um, MRI showed nothing significant, but a stroke was expected. She was diagnosed with bladder infection and was admitted to the hospital. And she did several tests, but nothing would justify her condition. And at that point, the patient had a bladder catheter and feeding by a catheter too. And she couldn't chew without speak, didn't recognize people and didn't move. And insulin was prescribed for her diabetes and at the hospital she stayed for 12 days. Even though the 
neurologist had failed to get the diagnosis, he prescribed Mantida. And she went home in a hospital bed with the tubes and urinary tract infections. And with the assistance of home care team, about four days of Mantida administration, she began to see small and progressive improvement every day. But just after a few months, the urinary infection returned and due to the use of antibiotics, the patient was very weak and with the mental confusion, dizziness and lack of appetite again. And she was only getting worse day after day. And she then started treatment with me. The patient presented a lot of mental confusion at the first appointment as the effect of the medication that the, the neurologist has a diminished effects. She started to have a diarrhea without control. And once at my clinic, she confused the bathroom for the acupuncture room and she did the, the poo in the acupuncture room instead of the bathroom. And she was very mentally ill and used the room as if it were the bathroom causing her a lot of embarrassment. And she then started the use of adult diapers and nowadays she needs help and everything, bathing, walking and personal hygiene. And measuring her chakras, all of them, uh, let me see. All of them were very energy depleted, rated one out of eight, like in the first case report, with the exception of the seven chakra, with the one, which was normal. And since the patient was very weak energy-wise, the first thing I did was change the dietary so that I can that she can absorb the nutrients more appropriately properly and because uh, the fifth chakra responsible for the absorption of nutrients was weakened therefore everything the patient ate was not properly absorbed for the formation of blood which is important for the nutrition of all cells in the body and overall health. And this patient, the diagnosis of diabetes and hypertension as published in scientific journal by me, that both are related to energy imbalances in the chakra. The diabetes and hypertension also uh, has the lack of energy in the chakra center. I had uh, some publications related to this. And when you treat the replenishing this chakra's energy, you can reduce the use of uh, anti-diabetic medication and also the, reduce the anti-hypertensive -hyper, uh, medication because all are related to the energy, lack of energy in the chakra center. And uh, here is the publication in diabetes. And there is another publication here about myocardial infarction too. Patient that has, history of myocardial infarction or cancer or hypertension or any chronic disease nowadays such as low back pain, uh, knee pain or chronic in, uh, urinary tract infections, all of them are related to lack of energy in the chakra centers. And that is why it's important to treat the root of all these problems that are the lack of energy in the chakras and not just treating the symptoms. Then diabetes is, is, according to this reasoning, is a, a symptom that we are treating in the leaf level. The root level is, uh, uh, is the, are the energy imbalances. Here I'm showing you the, that this patient had lack of energy in the first chakra, that's liver. Liver is responsible for the, um, 
uh, deposit of the blood inside the body and also the di distribution of energy inside the body that is all compromised in this patient. And the second chakra I told you is responsible for the production of yin yang yang that is the major importance for the health of all human beings. Mm -hmm. And uh, this chakra is also compromised in this patient. And the fifth chakra also is compromised because it is responsible for the absorption of nutrients. And when it is imbalanced, it can induce the formation, uh, retention of liquid and formation of phlegm that is one of the energy balances leading to dementia in Chinese medicine. Uh, also, I'm showing you the results. And here I'm showing you why uh, all the treatments that uh, I did nowadays is trying to don't use the high concentrated medication. And also I'm infectious, um, infectious disease doctor, but I try to use, no use antibiotics in these patients because the antibiotic is a high concentrated medication. I'm not telling you to don't use in any case, but I am developing some techniques using Chinese medicine. And I'm showing you in this publication and I'm showing in another web there nowadays, the treatment of chronic urinary tract infection and recurrent urinary tract infections. Patients that patients um, that have a constant urinary tract infection is caused by the lack of energy in the chakra centers too, leading to the formation of internal heat that is causing the urinary tract infection symptoms. And when you treat this lack of energy and take out the heat retention through the Chinese dietary counseling, advising the patient to don't to eat foods that could induce the energy imbalances and to don't, uh, you, you can avoid the use of antibiotics and do all the treatments without the use of this kind of medication. Why I'm uh, saying this you in, in this webinar, because I think the use of high concentrate medication nowadays is responsible for the decreasing in the vital energy in the majority of the patients and the leading to the, the majority, um, diverse disease. In this case, we are, uh, we are presenting the dementia, but it can induce many other diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, and even cancer nowadays because, and it's not only because of this, but one of the cause is this. That is why I'm, I am showing you many um, many other forms of treatment without the use of this kind of medication because it is inducing some other energy disharmonies and leading to a um, uh, very diverse disease. And here is showing you that I don't use uh, an infectious disease doctor in, in my 10 years of um, working here in Brazil, I use only in four patients during this period. And all, um, all the treatment is related to correcting the energy imbalances and correcting the diet in the patients to don't harm the energy leading to other disease in the future. Here are the auricular acupuncture points that I use to rebalance the internal energies. And the apex blood dilatin is the major importance in this treatment because if you treat the energy imbalance and don't take out the heat, the heat uh, could uh, imbalance even more. And that's why it's, it's important to take out the heat. And in the second step, you tone the internal energy. Here is showing you the study that I presented in 2015 at the Harvard Medical School, uh, saying that the balance of these four energies is very important in all the treatments. And if you treat this energy balance, you can treat all disease of this patient at the same time. 
even if you don't know that the patient has such a symptoms, like in the uh, first case that I show you, the patient with pain in the legs and glaucoma, that I treat his energy imbalances and all his disease were improved at the same time as he improved his intraocular pressure. And I, I, wa I was not aware that he had glaucoma. And here is the necessity to, to improve this chakra. This is the major importance to improve the liver, kidney, and the spleen and lung and liver too, to improve the distribution of energy. Here is the same. With treatment, uh, energy balance uh, using Chinese dietary counseling acupuncture, I was able to withdraw the antibiotics that was, uh, was promoting the, was harming her internal energy leading to the worsening of her dementia symptoms. And that is why it's important to try to choose another kind of treatment that you can do, uh, reducing the use of high concentrated medications. I will show you in this case, uh, is the Iron Schultz law is a law um, originated, uh, elaborated in 1888 by Chuchilian research. And in this law, they are explaining that the high concentrated medication here, if you use, you reduce even more the vital energy. That is why the second patient, she, uh, the, uh, she, uh, her, the Mesa symptoms worsened it when, when she needed to treat her chronic urinary tract infection with antibiotics. And when she did this treatment, her dementia symptoms worsened very much. And that is why I need I I did her treatment of urinary tract infection, uh, taking out the antibiotics and only rebalancing and recharging the chakra's energy that was low in the in energy that was leading to the formation of internal heat and taking out the internal heat and replenishing her chakras. It is important to treat the urinary tract infection and also to treat the cause of the, inter, uh, the energy imbalances that was causing the mesa. That is why I use the high diluted medication here to improve her internal energy, to improve the chakras energy and improve all her symptoms that was leading to the mesa symptoms. Here's to showing you that all internal organs are integrated and not working uh, isolated because in Western medicine, they, the, they, their, their reasoning is that the internal organs work isolated from each other, but in TCM, they are interconnected by the energy flow. You can see that, um, of a liver sends energy to the heart and heart sends to energy to the spleen, spleen sends energy to the lung and lung to the kidney. And in this case, both patients were in the lowest level of energy and not only this patient, I did a research in 2015 to 2020, studying a thousand patients that are measuring their chakras. And almost more than 90% of my patients were in the lowest level of energy. They don't have energy in any chakra, including children, adolescents, young adults, and older patients. All of them were in the lowest level. And the conclusion, <clears throat> the conclusion of this study is that patients with dementia have lack of energy in the chakras energy meridians that corresponds to the five massive organs in the five element theory in traditional Chinese medicine. And the corrections and the replenishing of this lack of the chakras energy is very important to recover and treat this kind of patients. And medications that could harm or this lack of energy already present by these patients should be reduced or even withdrawn. 
And uh, here is another Hippocrates quote, natural forces within us are the true healers of the disease. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your dog, do Dr. Huang Willing. Uh, any questions for Dr. Huang Willing? Uh, I have a question, doctor. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you, if a person is suffering from bladder issues, so like, you know, the, what chakras should I balance? The uh, gallbladder? Go, no, no, no. The urinary bladder, urinary tract and the bladder. Oh, there is infl uh, inflammation uh, in the bladder. Yeah. Inflammation. Inflammation means heat. Uh, yeah. The patient has heat retention in the bladder leading to, I think, urinary tract infection or uh, chronic cystites. And yeah. uh, you, you need to orientate. The first step is of orientation about the correct diet. You need to change her dietary Abs because if you do the acupuncture or other kinds of treatment to balance the internal energy without orientate the patient to avoid some kinds of food, they will imbalance again and you will not, uh, will not correct the energy imbalances. And that's why if the patient has bladder problem, it's not the problem in the bladder. As you can see, as I showed you in the five elements theory that all the organs are interconnected. And I think that she is uh, creating heat retention in the bladder because she has, probably she has some, uh, energy deficiency as I showed you. And you need to uh, uh, tell her to avoid all that um, foods that I showed in my presentation because all that food will try to balance the internal energy to don't imbalance uh, any chakra because if you imbalance one organ, you will imbalance all the system. And that is why you don't, you, it, it's important to don't, uh, to, to don't to, um, uh, see only the bladder because the bladder is only in the leaf level. You need to treat the root of the tree that is the energy balances in all the chakra, I think. And that is why I only uh, use the Chinese dietary counseling. I use the reflect acupuncture, taking out the heat retention in the apex and in the bladder point here. Okay. There is a point in the bladder in the ear that I take out the heat. And after, in the second step, I use the points to tone the internal energy. I use the kidney because kidney is the massive organ that is responsible for the bladder. I use the liver point. I use the spleen point. I use the lunger point. And I use the... Uh, heart point too. And uh, also I use that medication to replenish the internal chakras, the homeopathies. And, For the kidney and that I, I, it's, it was there on your uh, slide. Yeah, it's all the, uh, that, that kind, all the treatment is based on this because we need to treat the roots. And if you treat the root, all the problems of the, the, the patient will improve at the same time. And not only her bladder problem, but uh, I think she could have anxiety, depression, panic syndrome, and constipation, or other kinds of symptoms will, will improve. And also aging process will improve with this kind of treatment because all are coming from the same root and uh, the eggs uh, like you know like i saw the there was an egg also in the diet so it is not uh, yeah. so egg, that so egg. for not like it should cut down on her egg yeah function. yeah eggs in western medicine they uh, they tell that it is good for health 
but in TCM, they don't see the protein, the fat, or the carbs, or the, the, in TCM, they only study the energy of this food, what, which okay. is the energy, and the energy of the egg is, is hot, and that is why okay. in this patient, specifically, when you, you, she is eating egg, you need to say to her to avoid the egg, because egg yeah, because she, worse. she, knows. yeah, she takes eggs every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of the cause of her bladder. Right, 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 it's, right, it's, right. She is eating egg. And when the egg is fried, it's worse. And you need to orientate no, it's because just egg boiled, is fried. She, yeah, so I, yeah, I but tell her to can boil yeah. the, the ten part. Yeah, I tell her to avoid that. Thank you so much for the uh, okay. advice. Yeah. Any more questions for Dr. Huang Willing? If no questions, can we go for a break for 10 minutes? <laughs> 